Hey, what's up? It's me again, the Rotten Tomatoes for Twitch, here to critique yet another huge change coming to Twitch. I know this is like the 10th time I made a video joking about and talking about Twitch things, but I can't help it. I'm passionate about it. I fucking stream on there daily, so obviously I want it to be the best platform it can be. So when a big change or decision is made over there, whether it's good or bad, I like to do what a high school stoner likes to do after their first hit of marijuana. Talk about it. So what we'll be talking about today is the unveiling of Twitch's new Safety Advisory Council. There may have been no E3 this year, but we still got a huge fucking announcement here thanks to Twitch. In a nutshell, this Jedi Council consists of both members of the Twitch streaming community as well as experts outside of it to weigh in on decisions made on the platform as well as potential policies going forward and changes to existing policies making things clearer, shit like that. I'll throw my nutsack out here to be abused for a minute here by going against the grain and saying, on paper, I actually think this is a good idea. By having faces attached to decisions on the platform, people can actually feel like their voices can be heard. Whereas the, the entire history of Twitch has just had faceless people making these decisions behind the scenes, you know, pulling the strings on the marionettes and making them dance for these weird policies and weird favoritism. Well now, with this council here, there are actual streamers, very popular streamers attached to it that you can communicate with and get answers from. We don't know how much power this council is going to have, which still leads to a lot of confusion, but just the fact that they're taking a step in putting faces to decisions going forward, I think is a step in the right direction and making people feel like their voices can at least be heard. But I will say, I hate the fucking name of this. The Safety Advisory Council sounds dystopian. That sounds like something out of Judge Dredd. Just fucking pull up to an apartment complex over a noise complaint. Yes, I'm here on behalf of the Safety Advisory Council. Your noise was too high, too many decibels. You've been cancelled. Fucking puts a bullet in their skull. It's just not a good name that doesn't really instill confidence in people that hear that. Now looking at the people aboard the council, I only know two of them, Co Carnage and Ziz. Uh, admittedly, I'm unfamiliar with the others, but I'm going to give Twitch the benefit of the doubt that these are good fits for their positions. But Co Carnage and Ziz in particular, I think are excellent fits here. I'm familiar with both their content. I actively watch Co and I've tuned into Ziz occasionally. And I think both of them have a very good understanding of Twitch culture as well as understanding exactly what is and is not allowed and how to make policies more clear as well as what policies should not even be there in the first place. As Ko said during one of his streams about this, he's actively fighting to make sure there's not too many rules that start suffocating the creators and I think that is the absolute best way of approaching something like this with this kind of responsibility. Now, as I said, I don't know the majority of people on that list, but I am giving them the benefit of the doubt. However, one of them in particular, named Steph, has recently shown that the power is kind of getting to them in a certain way. And I'm not trying to be rude, but it's really hard to have a positive opinion of the Safety Advisory Council right now due to the drama that she's stirring up on her own personal streams. You can't get rid of me. Twitch is endorsing me. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, I'm just gonna dance dance to your sad tears. I'm just gonna drink your tears. This is her celebrating the fact that she's no longer subject to bans on Twitch due to her position, and I think this just lacks taste. Twitch has been a platform that's been plagued by very odd bans that have ruined lives, so for her to come out here and say that nothing will ever happen to her because of her position and rub it in the face of people who have been wronged by bans like that, I think just shows a real lack of care for the people on the platform. Now I'm not here to humiliate or belittle Steph in any way, I already know a lot of people are going to point out that viral clip of her where she's roleplaying as a deer having an orgasm on a stream. Yes, I think it's odd to broadcast that on Twitch, but it's not pertinent to what I want to talk about. And you know me, I like to joke about those odd fetishes all the time, like that person that steps on bread and ejaculates in their pants. I, should th I think that shit is just really fun to make some jokes about, but they're just that. They're harmless jokes. I never like to maliciously target someone or try and ruin someone's life over a kink or anything like that. Whereas in this case, I feel like people are going beyond just goofing around. They're genuinely trying to ruin her life over that deer clip and I just wouldn't want to play a part in that. On a side note before continuing though, that person that was stepping on the bread and ejaculating, they actually reached out to me like a year ago offering to teach me how to do it properly. So they were super nice, they enjoyed the video. Just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you see me stepping on bread and coming in my pants, you know I was taught by the master. 
Immediately after Twitch announced that she's a member of this council, she went live and started antagonizing the broad Twitch community, in particular livestream fails. I also fucking hate livestream fails, I think that place is a cesspool. It's basically just an XQC cum dumpster. Anytime XQC moves in his chair or makes even the slightest micro expression on his face, it's like a 30 second clip that's spammed for an hour. That subreddit is literally a time capsule into old Tumblr, it's like maintain the essence, that old fucking odor of Tumblr. It has this two camps, it's like a perpetual civil war. One camp that loves fake manufactured drama and getting invested in these reality TV shows on Twitch, and this camp that pretends to hate it, but what they love is loud, screeching, jingling key clips, but they also still do love that fake drama, so then they'll come together and start upvoting all these drama things, and then they start attacking each other. It's a weird community, and no one hates livestream fails more than livestream fails community hates themselves. It's really weird. It's, a, it's a, not a good subreddit. So I totally understand why the majority of streamers don't even like it in the first place. But what Steph has done is she's taken livestream fails and put that as the face of Twitch itself. So instead of just attacking some of the bad actors on livestream fails, she's attacking everybody on Twitch for a ton of different things. Well, I just, I'm just not cool with white supremacy, y'all. It's really not that, I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Sorry. Just a fact of how I feel, which isn't a big deal. It's such a fucked up thing to say, especially on a platform like Twitch, which is primarily composed of gamers. Not to go like 90s back of the cereal box slogan, but Twitch is literally like extreme gamer zone territory. So to outright vilify gamers by calling a lot of them white supremacists is so beyond disrespectful, and especially given your position as a member of the Safety Advisory Council. How does that make anyone feel confident about the decisions you'll make in that council going forward when you clearly already have a clear disdain for gamers on that platform, a platform that you now represent in a very high level capacity, at least judging by the announcement? So it's just very odd because you're coming across as openly hateful and proudly prejudiced. I said a lot of people with cis white male sounding voices are here telling me that voice chat isn't a problem, and that is a fact. Y'all have voices that aren't marginalized coming in and saying, just mute, it's not an issue, everyone faces harassment, I've heard it all, you're, you're just repeating my several, like a year ago. The only way to have a level playing field at the highest level of play is to have, is, is, is to not have voice chat, to not have people give up their linguistic profiles. I mean, and maybe you- It was this opinion that really sparked the majority of outrage initially because she firmly believes that voice chat really shouldn't exist in the first place. Now, I want to make it clear she's in no way going to developers lobbying to have it removed or anything. She's simply, simply sharing her opinion that she doesn't believe that it should be an integral part of games. And the majority of gamers understandably disagree because without a voice chat, what the fuck are you supposed to do with your teammates in like a game of Valorant? Use the in-game voice commands and just spam no? Or in Rocket League, nice save? Like if you don't have voice chat, you have no way of really communicating with your team to win games. But for Steph, she believes that it's an unfair advantage or disadvantage depending on the sound of the person's voice who's using the voice chat. She argues that those with a marginalized voice have to resort to blocking and muting toxic players in their lobbies, which inhibits their ability to communicate and win the games. And that's a fair point. That shit absolutely does happen. Anytime a girl talks in like a fucking Overwatch lobby or Valorant, dudes will fucking dogpile on that like they're recovering a fumble in the Super Bowl. They're either getting flirted with or just outright insulted and harassed. That absolutely is very commonplace and you're lying to yourself if you think it's not. It is, regrettably. And not to downplay the issue, but everyone gets harassed in voice chat when it comes to like higher level play or just toxic assholes in general. It's not a problem that's exclusive to women or voices that are marginalized. In video games like that, there are just toxic assholes. And it's not just voice chat, it's everywhere. If you take away voice chat, text chat becomes extremely toxic. League of Legends has notoriously one of the most toxic communities around, and there's no voice chat there, it's only text. When I was addicted to League of Legends, I never felt so fucking bad about myself because of that voice chat, or uh, text chat. So it's not an issue with just voice chat in general, it's just there's assholes in the world. Uh, un unfortunately, that's just what it is. But luckily, thanks to the incredible advancements in technology, we found the solution, we have the answer. It's called just muting the assholes, blocking them. You don't have to hear these things. You can always block people that are just outright rude and nasty. 
So I understand her opinion, and I do agree that the harassment in voice chat, especially for women, is pretty fucking nuts these days, but you can just not hear it by muting them. And yeah, it does suck having to mute your teammates, but if the alternative is just taking away voice chat entirely, it's better than the alternative. Now again, I think there's nothing wrong with having this opinion from her, and I don't think it's means to just outright harass and berate her. The problem is the way that she approaches getting these ideas across and her beliefs She's very standoffish, and anyone who disagrees with her, she immediately labels as either a white supremacist or an overly privileged cis white male. She seems to enjoy attacking the community she's supposed to be representing and looking out for. Like with the first clip I showed, dancing about her immunity from Twitch because they now formally endorse her into this council. And she's saying how she's just going to drink the tears of the people who are upset about the things she says. So, and she bans everyone in her chat that happens to disagree. Now don't get me wrong, she does ban actual douchebags that deserve it, but she also just bans people that are asking simple questions or just happen to disagree, but not just banning them, labeling them some very nasty titles, which I just think is wrong. Asmongold said it best when he said, this kind of behavior really shouldn't be accepted from someone at that position, because imagine if someone said something different that wasn't cis white male, you know? What if someone said, gays are ruining the voice chat so we need to remove voice chat? Instead of saying cis white males are ruining voice chat, what if it was replaced by gays? Whoever said that would be immediately removed from that platform in permaban because that wouldn't be accepted. And rightfully so. Nobody should be judged by their skin color or sexual orientation, attacked for their skin color or sexual orientation, put into these groups and vilified because of their skin color or sexual orientation. Racism is bad. Racism, discrimination, hating people for choices they make with their own body, all of it, bad. Very bad. But because she's the one saying it about cis white males, for some reason it's not only accepted, but it is endorsed by Twitch. Which I think, and most streamers and most people on the platform think, is not a good thing and sets a very fearful precedent and is immediately kind of dividing the community about safety advisory versus the community. Which is the absolute worst thing because on paper it seems like the council was supposed to be a way to bridge this gap where we can finally have real communication between Twitch power, and just the people on the platform. But unfortunately, there's already a divide being caused, but I am still genuinely hopeful that the council will be something positive for the platform because this is a step in the right direction, at least the idea and the theory of it by having actual members of the community representing the community's interest in a higher capacity, I think is a great step. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, and uh, that's it. So yeah.